we are asked to evaluate the given definite integral. Analyzing the form of the integrand function, because the denominator is the square root of the quantity one minus x squared, we might be thinking we should apply the integration formula shown here, where the integral of du divided by the square root of the quantity a squared minus u squared equals arc sine of u divided by a plus c. But that's not the case here because the numerator is inverse sine of x. And this integration formula should remind us of the derivative of arc sine or inverse sine. For a quick review, remember, the derivative of inverse sine u with respect to x is equal to one divided by the square root of one minus u squared times du. In our case, notice u is equal to x, and therefore u prime is equal to one. So going back to our example, we are going to let u equal the numerator of inverse sine of x. So if u is equal to inverse sine of x, or arc sine of x, then du is equal to the derivative of inverse sine of x times dx, which we now know is equal to one divided by the square root of one minus x squared times dx. So now looking back at the integral, we can now substitute u for inverse sine x, and the coefficient of inverse sine x is one, and we also now know we can substitute du for one divided by the square root of the quantity one minus x squared dx. Before writing the integral with respect to u though, we need to remember the limits of integration from zero to one half are x values, not u values, and therefore we will temporarily leave the limits of integration off. So again, one divided by the square root of the quantity one minus x squared dx is equal to du, and since u is equal to inverse sine x, the integrand function is just u. And now let's find the limits of integration with respect to u. When x is equal to zero, u is equal to inverse sine of zero, which is equal to the angle theta and the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a sine function value of zero, which is zero radians. The lower limit of integration with respect to u is zero. And then for the upper limit, when x is equal to one half, u is equal to inverse sine of one half, which again is the angle in the closed interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two that has a sine function value of one half. Well, this should remind us of a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle. And we know we're in the first quadrant because the sine function value is positive, where we can label the short leg one, the hypotenuse two, the long leg square root three. Remember, sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, and therefore this is the angle we're looking for, which is 30 degrees, or pi divided by six radians. Pi divided by six is the upper limit of integration with respect to u. And now let's go ahead and evaluate the integral with respect to u. The antiderivative is u squared divided by two, or one half u squared. Let's go ahead and factor out the one half. And now we need to determine one half times the difference of big F of pi divided by six and big F of zero, which gives us the square of pi divided by six minus the square of zero, which is equal to one half times pi squared divided by 36, which equals pi squared divided by 72. This is the exact value of the definite integral. I hope you found this helpful.